What's going on everybody? My name is Matt. Uh, it is super dark right now because it is nighttime right now. But I thought I would record a video um, to kind of save me from answering the same question over and over and over again. One of the most common questions I get are about the books I'm reading and the philosophy behind my reading and how I read. So to give you just a brief, brief, brief thing, when it comes to reading, I read in two different ways. One, I have a book that I'm doing a deeper physical reading uh, where I'm going slow and underlining writing and all that stuff with the book. Like right now I'm doing a book on fasting because I have a teaching coming up where I'm going to be teaching on fasting and I want to make sure that I'm ready to go for it. Now for other books that I may not be as interested in or maybe that I'm trying to get through on my shelf that we're going to see in a second is I use audiobook. Audible is a great, great resource. And um, you get one free book a month, plus their entire free catalog, which a lot of the books that I have are on their free catalog, which means I'm able to get through them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my philosophy. There's nothing really special to it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and dive in to my shelf. I'm going to show you everything I've got. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. But I will show you, and hopefully, you know, if you want to read some of these, you can. I'll recommend some. I'll, I won't recommend others. I won't talk negatively, though. I'll just say a book was good or bad, and I won't necessarily go into detail for the most part. Um, except for the ones I like. Maybe I'll go into some detail. But anyways, this intro is already too long. Let's get into the books. All right. This is literally my bookshelf. Uh, I'm going to go through each of these books here. Uh, or each of these shelves. Uh, but first, I want to show you this little pile right here. So this pile, is, I, I kind of stole this pile and that shelf. I stole these ideas from Marty Solomon. So a uh, shout out to him who gave the idea. But this is what's called the to read pile. These are the books in order of what I want to read next. So when I finish the book on fasting, I've actually already started the source. I actually took a break from it to read my book on fasting. But I am doing the source next, and I'll, I'll show you some of the other ones that I have on this. And then this is what's called my favorite shelf. Has in order all of my favorite books from left to right. And, um, and then the rest of these have their own significant meaning to them. But I don't want to waste much time. Let's go to my to-read pile first. So, just to give you an idea of what I plan to read. The source is what's next, and I have a book called Christ and Adam was recommended by my brother. What we talk about when we talk about God, I love Rob Bell. Say uh, listen, I, I don't I'm not interested in in debating Rob Bell. Some people don't like him, I understand. Um and then those two books that say the word worth on it. Let me see if I can move my hand here. This book and this book, these two books are to be paired with Revelation. It's about, you know, the Roman culture and the Greco culture, uh, Greco Asian culture. And help you kind of understand the context of the letters to the different cities. And um, yeah, I'm excited to dive into those. I have a book on Galatians there by Thomas Lancaster. The Epic of Eden. I've got the Genesis Parashah Companion by Rabbi David Foreman. Jesus for President. Kingdom Grace Judgment. This is a book about the parables I'm really excited to dive into. Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus by... Uh, Lois Tuerberg. Tuerberg. She actually, I actually uh, am friends with her on Facebook now, which is kind of funny. Um, Rob Bell's book, What is the Bible? And then this one's an interesting one. So this one, this one, this one, and this one are all part of a massive body of work by N.T. Wright. I don't remember the name of it. It's like Christian Origins and something, something, something. Um, but it's essentially the entire New Testament and uh, all of his te exhaustive teaching on the New Testament. So this one right here is like a summary of the New Testament um, to kind of give you an introduction into the whole thing. Then we have one on the life of Jesus and maybe the death. I haven't really I haven't read these, so I don't really know exactly what they're about. This one obviously is about the resurrection, and then we got some Paul stuff, which I'm really excited to dive into. Uh, we got Walking in the Dust of Rabbi Jesus, which is a, a sequel to this. 
We got a book on Paul here by Epp Sanders. Really excited about that one. Uh, Eusebius, the church history. Um, one of the earliest, if not the earliest, um, early church historian or church uh, church history writer. Um, then we got a book here. So the book that I wrote that I'm reading on fasting is part of a series called the Ancient Practices series. And they have a couple of other books in there, th or not, in, uh, not just a couple, they have a few other books. And this tithing book and this In Constant Prayer are another, is another book. I actually have really loved these books because they're really helpful in understanding some context. And then down here, we have Out of Babylon by Walter Brueggemann, which I've not read Brueggemann, but I heard that he's a titan, and I'm excited to dive into his stuff. And then we have The Queen You Thought You Knew by Rabbi David Foreman, which is another one I'm super, super excited about. Now, let's move over to my shelf. Let's start with the top. So here we have um, the Bibles that are either too big to fit on my shelf or that I use. As far as ones I use, I really only use this one along with these. Uh, this one, this one, and then my main Bible, which is in this other room. Sorry for the mess over here. There's actually some trash right there. Just ignore that. Let me actually just close this door. Boom. Can't see it anymore. Um... But yeah, so like we have, this is the Message Bible. This was a Bible I was given uh, by somebody at my church. The NET Bible with all the with all the notes in it. And then an ESV Study Bible. Not crazy about the ESV um, because of their, bi their leaning, their biases. Every Bible has some kind of bias, but the ESV leans very Reformed, which is not the tradition that, that I am a big fan of anymore. Um, I say anymore because I used to be. Hence the reason I have the Bible. But this Bible, along with these two, are Robert Alter's Hebrew Scriptures, which um, so far I've been reading a little bit in Genesis, and it is it is so good. He is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant teacher. Um, I've got a devotional up here, you know, not, not super crazy. This was actually given to me by my, I believe it was my aunt, I think. Let me see. Yes. Um, given to me by my aunt, so that's a great gift. And there's some good stuff in there. It's not all bad, but um, you know, it's it's devotional. Devotionals, I'm not crazy about. Um, it's just an empty notebook. Just looks cool, but I haven't found a home for it yet. A Eugene Peterson devotional. I was actually pretty disappointed in this one because I thought it was actually going to be a devotional, but all it is is the introduction into all of the message books of the Bible, but it has some cool artwork and stuff in here, but it's essentially just the introductions already in the message, and I was like, okay, well, that's kind of a bummer. All right, let's get to the shelf that we probably all are, are wanting to know. This is the questions that I get the most often. Matt, what books do you like? What books do you recommend? And let's look at them. I'll, I'll go through them kind of slow. You can probably get a screenshot of some of these, but some of these you won't be able to see because their their spines don't aren't necessarily the clearest. But my favorite book, as it sits on my shelf, my favorite book of all time, is The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Very, very small book. Phenomenal book on just living your life and practicing basic everyday tasks for the glory and love of God. Or not, I'm sorry, not, not just the glory of God, but for the love of God. Um, then we have The Shack, which is phenomenal. I don't care what people say. The Shack is an absolutely amazing book. Um, I have Jesus and the Undoing of Adam. Uh, this book is really interesting because it's essentially like talking about how, uh, this isn't the only thing in the book, but the big thing that I remember from this book is that Jesus and what he did went back to not just Adam's mistakes, but all of our mistakes and reversed those mistakes. Yes, they happen. Yes, we, we still have to deal with you know, if, if we hurt somebody, we still have to reconcile with those that we've hurt. But as far as like in God's eyes, how he sees the sin that we've committed, Jesus went back through his death and said no to the things that we said yes to that we shouldn't have, which is, I, I loved that picture. It was a, such a good book. Uh, there's a lot more good stuff in there. I recommend that book strongly. Uh, Jesus Wants to Save Christians. This is one of the first books I read on strong Eastern context in the Bible and how to read the Bible through an Eastern context and how to see Jesus through an Eastern context. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. 
I love the green pages too. Um, Surprised by Hope by N.T. Wright. Fantastic, fantastic book. Um, really helped me get past all the dispensational um, rapture stuff, which again, I, I if you don't, if you if you believe in the rapture and, and that's your thing, that's totally totally fine. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna sit here and tell you why you shouldn't believe it. But there was because of of the way that I was looking at how the world ends, um, it caused me no not to really care about my own life and just to live my life going through the motions. And this book really provided, pun intended, some hope. In, uh, in my life. So again, if if I, I'm if you believe in the rapture and that's your thing, I, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm I'm just telling you that this book kind of helped me to see the context of all those texts that I used to use for that, and came to a conclusion that maybe that wasn't the best way to look at it. Um, man, I'm probably gonna get some comments about that. But anyways, um, you, save your comments. I'm not interested in arguing. We can just agree to disagree. It's totally fine. Uh, Parable of the Dancing God by C. Baxter Kruger. This book is about Luke 15. Very, very tiny book. But man, does this give you a beautiful picture of not just the... Um, I hate to use the word prodigal son because the, pro the story never calls him prodigal. Um, the son that came home. But this, this actually refers to it as the parable of the dancing God, and it takes it from the Father's perspective. Like, we put a lot of emphasis on the Son, but not a whole lot on the Father. And uh, this book does a good job of, of painting that picture, and it's it's beautiful. Love Wins by Rob Bell. Um, most people think this book is total heresy. That's fine. Uh, Prototype by Jonathan Martin. Fantastic, fantastic book. Uh, like one thing that he said in this book that that was so good is that uh, Jesus is one of, if not the only person that was told by God how much he loved him, and Jesus lived the rest of his life believing it without ever faltering from the truth of God's love for him. Which you know, obviously he is God, but you know what I mean. Like he's the only human being to ever believe that entirely without faltering from that. And it goes into how we can start to be more like Christ in that way. Um, what is this book? Oh, Velvet Elvis by Rob Bell. It was actually Rob Bell's first book. Fantastic. We Carry Kevin. Oh, my goodness. This book. My favorite... I don't even know if you would call it a biography, but my favorite book about someone's story... And I don't want to spoil anything in this book, but it's a, essentially you can see it in this picture. Um, Kevin Chandler it has a, a certain uh, condition, physical condition, where he's unable to walk and he can't really do much. He can't even hold his head up that straight without you know, having some issues with his muscles. But the story is about how him and his friends went uh, to Europe and, and traveled and had some cool adventures because it was always his dream to scale up uh, a certain mountain that's in um in Europe and his friends allowed him to do that by by putting him on in their back and carrying him up that mountain and there's just there's so many good nuggets in there and it, man I, I was crying in this book this book really had it moved me to tears how to be here by Rob Bell fantastic book the Sabbath by Abraham Joshua Heschel whoo we man, this is a book that is small in length, but if you re if you read one page, you'll have to sit and reflect on that page for a few hours. It's just it it took me forever to read this because I was just constantly reflecting. You hear that plane in the background? Sorry, that distracted me. The generosity of God. This is actually written by my brother. Uh, it was his very first book. He now has two books, which I'll show you down here in a second. Um, but this is uh, such a good book. The Sacred Overlap by J.R. Briggs. So, so good. Um, on the Incarnation by St. Athanasius. Man, man, man. No better book on incarnation that exists, in my opinion, that I've read. Blue Like Jazz by Donald Miller. Another Donald Miller book. A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. Both of these books. Woo I love Donald Miller's writing style. He uses lots of stories to help you understand something. This is a unique one. This one, I, I found this one on Audible. 
It was a free book on Audible, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to listen to it, because the title is interesting. Ten Things Your Minister Wants to Tell You But Can't Because He Needs the Job. And it's just such a good book. I loved this book. And it was so good that I physically bought this just so I could throw it on my favorite shelf because it is really, really, really good. Let's see if I can do this with... This is so difficult to do with one hand. Oh. Man, almost got it. And... Oh, I just pushed the other book back. Oh, this is so difficult. All right, close enough. Uh, the Forgotten Jesus by Robbie Gallaty. Very, very good book. Um... The Zimzum of Love. Uh, I'm not married, but this is the best book I've ever read on marriage. Such a good book. Now, I'm going to move... Let's move down. Give me a little break from having my harmony hold up. The Most of these books going forward, I have not read. These are still books that I have yet to read. I've read a lot of these, but not all of them. So just a heads up. On this shelf, this is the one I've probably not read the most. I have over here The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr, which I'm really excited to dive into. Um, I've read this book, which is What Christians Believe by C.S. Lewis. Didn't even know that this book was part of Mere Christianity until reading Mere Christianity and realizing that this is actually a big chunk of that book. This is actually in the book, the whole thing. And so I felt like I read it twice, but it, it was the best part of mere Christianity, in my opinion. So I did not mind reading it twice. Uh, but, um, uh, the Oh, this book is so good. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. Such a good book. Uh, it's, like a, it's almost like a children's book. Uh, you know what? Let me just show you this real quick. It's almost like a children's book. You, you can open it up to any random page, though. This is the interesting part about this book. It's it's pretty thick. There's like probably 70 or so pages in here. But you can open this up to any page and get some kind of little lesson. Let's see if I can do this uh, on my while looking at it on my phone. Sometimes I worry you'll all realize I'm ordinary, said the boy. Love doesn't need you to be extraordinary, said the mole. Like, isn't that so good? And so all these books have these cool little designs and has a cool little story in here. I mean, it's it's just a basic, basic book. You could read this in one sitting. But so many good things in here just brought a huge smile to my face. I saw someone recommend this on another... I love watching bookshelf tours. Um, and this was the book that was recommended. And I was like, this book just looks so interesting. So, this book is highly, highly recommended. It was actually on my favorite shelf for a while. I'm just going to put this up on top until I get done with the video. Uh, God and the Pandemic. You know, this book obviously is, is not as relevant anymore, um, but this book still has some good stuff. It's a really short book. It's like, I think, 100 pages or so, maybe even less. I recommend reading it. It's got some good stuff on how to handle things like suffering and, and sickness and things like that from N.T. Wright. Such a good book. Let's see if I can squeeze around here. I'm kind of sitting beside my bed. This is my... So from here over is like my Old Testament stuff. And then from here over is just some extra space that I needed to fill. I've not read a lot on this shelf either. So I have read this book, which is The Lost World of Genesis 1. Great, great book. Um, some stuff in there kind of frustrates me, but different conversation for a different day. Um, I've not read any of these books yet, although I'm looking forward to all of these. The current audiobook I'm working on right now, guys, The Great Controversy. Man, this book is tough to listen to. Uh, that's all I'll say on the matter. Um, little, little, blah, 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 English. Little... Like, <laughs> Leadership Promises for Every Day by John Maxwell. This is a, a devotional, and it's uh, it's interesting. Um, to Paint a Praise, a little book on poetry by somebody local from around where I'm at. A great little book. Let's see if I can work myself out. Just hit my knee. All right. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, here we go. So, this little shelf, I've read... A few, actually, I've read most of this shelf um, in terms of quantity. I haven't read these two books yet. 
Although I'm excited about this one, I'm not as excited about this one. If you know me, you know that systematic theology is not necessarily my favorite thing. A Burning in My Bones, it's a biography by, uh, of uh, Eugene Peterson. Very, very, very good. Lots of awesome, awesome stuff in there, man. Another book uh, from the Ancient Practices series, The Sacred Meal. have not read this one yet. The only book of homosexuality I've ever read, um, Single Gay Christian. It was another one of those free audiobooks, similar to the one that was uh, here. And just, it was awesome. Like, now, I'm not going to go into, this is not the video to go into my perspective on homosexuality, but he just goes through his story and how, as a gay man, like how how Christians treated him and how he wished they would have treated him. It was just super helpful to know maybe how to talk to people that are, you know, wrestling with the same stuff. Uh, the Art of War by Sun Tzu. If you don't have anything nice to say, um, this is a super old book. It's actually, this book's from, from one of the oldest books that, that exist. This is obviously the English translation, but it's one of the oldest books that exist in, in our works of antiquity is The Art of War, um, surprisingly. Um, we have Plato, The Republic. I have not read that yet. I have read all of these leadership books. Um, not a huge fan of really any of them. If I had to recommend two, it'd be the two on the far left, which is um, Chestnut Checkers by Mark Miller. In the heart of leadership. But even those I'm not like crazy about. Alright, let's slide over. Two more shelves and we're and then we're done. Oh. Alright, this is not easy where I'm sitting. Um we have here again a lot of so I've read a lot of these books. Um not mo not all of them though. I've not read these two. This is less is more than or I'm sorry, the Great Dance. By C. Baxter Kruger, the same one that wrote Jesus and the Undoing of Adams and, and the Parable of the Dancing God. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, Echoes of His Presence, the only book by Ray Vanderlaan that I could find, which I'm excited to read. Uh, Less is More Than Enough. Have not read those. I read, so this is a three part series by A.W. Tozer. The Knowledge of the Holy, The Pursuit of God, and God's Pursuit of Man. And I've only read The Pursuit of God. Um, let's see here. Jesus Outside the Lions, pretty good book. Um, I don't think I'd recommend this book, but, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, so let me focus my video here. Here we go. All right, so we got a C.S. Lewis collection. I've read most of these, but not all of them. Um, have not read Miracles or The Four Loves or The Problem of Pain, but I've read all these five. Mere Christianity wasn't a huge fan of. A Grief Observed was great. Screw tape letters wasn't a fan of. The Abolition of Man, fantastic. The Great Dance, oh man, my favorite. The Great Dance is my favorite C.S. Lewis book right now. Book on Spiritual Disciplines, Crazy Love by Francis Chan was eh, it's okay. It was okay. Had some. It, it was some good stuff in there, but wasn't my favorite. Um, letters to Malcolm, book on prayer, really good book actually. I actually really like this book. It's one on my recommended list. There's not many books by C.S. Lewis that I can say is on my recommended list, but the ones that are on there I really like. Um, he's I'm kind of mixed feelings about C.S. Lewis. Some books of his I'm not a fan of at all, and some of his stuff I really enjoy. I even have the Chronicles of Narnia up there somewhere, um, the whole series that I'm going to read eventually. And then down here, we just have, um, we have a notebook, we have an interlinear Bible, Strong's Concordance, the Apocrypha, Rabbinic Reference Bible. This is actually pretty interesting. It kind of gives you all of the rabbinic teachings that are out there. It doesn't actually teach you anything. But it says, if you want more information on this verse, then, and it gives you the reference of where you can go and look. Um, it doesn't actually quote it, but it just tells you where you can go and find it. Um, we have a couple commentaries here on Genesis. This one has Genesis and Exodus. And then this is just a more of an encyclopedia. It has maps and and charts and things like that of the Bible. Very Super helpful tool. This is probably the most helpful tool that you'll find out there on just basic, basic stuff on the Bible, like what the Bible is, how it's organized, how we got the Bible, 
the books of the Bible, uh, church history, and then a lot of context stuff. Really good, really good. And then over here, beside, so this is another devotional that I have not, I've never read this devotional. I read the first day, and that's it. But, you know, one day I'm going to get through this one, just to say that I've went through it. But it's for teens, I don't know, how, and this is a really old devotional. I've had this devotional for goodness, I'd say, I'd say it's been about 15 years I've had this devotional. So I don't exactly know how relevant it's going to be. Uh, and then here we just got a bunch of Bibles. These are all of my Bibles that I uh, that I own. Uh, we have a little King James Bible that I got when I was younger from my grandfather. Uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible, uh, NIV. This one I believe is an NLT. Yeah, NLT. We have a, a Passion Translation. A Good News Translation, another NLT, I believe, um, another King James, another King James. Um, yeah, so that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's uh, my bookshelf. Let me move back over and give you one more solid look of my bookshelf. That is my bookshelf. Um Again, it's it's not a lot of stuff. I've just recently, so I used to have to read for assignments and stuff, but now um, I actually want to dig in and read this stuff, and that's why that to read pile is so large. My goal is counting because I can because of my job, I'm able to get through about one to two audiobooks per week. Um, so my goal is by next year. By um, the end of next year, and I'm including now as well, is to get through this whole stack and all of these shelves. For, for, so this shelf, this shelf, this shelf, and those books right there. So the Josephus and Systematic Theology, those books, I'm not including in that because they're super huge. And I'm not including my commentaries, but... All of the the normal size books here, here, uh, I've already read those uh, here and here, and then all of these I hope to read by the end of next year, including audiobooks. So that's my goal. Um, I don't want to purchase any more book, book books until I um, get through all of these first. Also, too, for those who suggest me for me to read books, listen to me very carefully, okay? I am not going to add any more books to this pile. This is my to-read pile. The books that people have suggested are in there. But going forward, if you suggest a book, it's not going to be read until at least the end of next year. Okay? So just a fair heads up. I'll add it. I have a list on a on a um, Word document or a, a, doc, a Google document. It has all the books that I want to read down the road, but these, I'm not purchasing any more books until I get through these. That's just set in stone. I may get some more books that, you know, are low in supply, or maybe I get them as a gift or whatever. I'll have the books, but these are the, this is the goal that I have, is to finish this by next year. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me turn my camera around and we'll, and we'll close this out. All right, everybody, that's my bookshelf. Um, not a whole lot of stuff on there. I, I know it's a short bookshelf, and I know this video was about 30 minutes, but typically that's how these things go. People get it, get into them. My hope is, is whenever I move into a new place, right now my apartment, like you're literally seeing my entire apartment right now, except for my bedroom, which is in there. Um, when I get a new place, my goal is to get a bigger bookshelf and start to have more books. But again, I want to get through those books first, read everything I have, and then go from there. Also, just for reference, this is the book of fasting that I'm working on, if you're curious. Uh, it's by Scott McKnight, and um, it's been super helpful so far. Very, very good. Um, oh, and one more thing. Let me just show you. Whoops. This is my... NIV Bible. This is my the Bible that I use every day, the Bible I preach from, all that stuff. Um, but anyways, that's everything that that's every book that I have. I've showed you every book that I own. Um yeah. So again, if you if you see authors that you don't agree with or don't like, please don't comment 
because I'm I, I'm not going to engage in that stuff. I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to argue. If you don't like Rob Bell, if you don't like William Paul Young, if you don't like Scott McKnight, um, if you don't like N.T. Wright, if you don't like new perspective on Paul stuff, just save save your save your uh, your emails and your and your comments. But um, yeah, that's my bookshelf. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in whatever we do next. Um, probably another study, but I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.